Hey, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're taking a look at myopia and what it should mean to you as an optician. Hey, I'm Sean Lessard from ModernOptician.com, where we help student opticians achieve their career goals through books, study guides, and online video resources like this one. So if you found value in this video, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly videos as they drop. Now let's jump into this week's lecture on myopia. All right, here we go into the presentation about myopia. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention how important it is to be a master at myopia as an optician, seeing as how if we were to talk about, you know, what the number one uh, ailment or in this, in this case, refractive error is that we deal with on a day to day basis, it's definitely myopia. So whether you want to be a better fitter, a better, you know, better at giving recommendations, and a better troubleshooter, understanding the link between anatomy and optics is going to go a long way in making you a better optician. All right, let's jump into it. And of course, before we get started, just a quick reminder of the resources available to you as a student optician, make sure to check out modernoptician.com for books, study guides, and all sorts of other resources that will help you achieve your goals, whether it be just be a better optician in the dispensary or challenge your board exams. We have all the resources to help you do that. This particular lecture follows very closely to pages in workbook one of the study guides for apprentice optician. So make sure to check it out at modernoptician.com or uh, all paperback books available internationally on Amazon as well. Okay, let's jump into it. All right, just like our presentation last week on normal vision, I want to go through myopia simplified, just like I did normal vision simplified. And the goal here is to show kind of what the layman version of the concept is so that we can see what most students learn and then we can expand from there. So for most people, the concept of myopia refers to having blurry distance vision and somewhat adequate near vision. And this is where the layman term nearsightedness stems from. And as you follow this channel, you're going to start to realize that I'm not a big fan of most of the layman terms that describe refractive error or most of the optical principles that we're going to discuss. However, nearsightedness is very much the exception to the rule. I really like this term because it actually gets the student to think of myopia in the proper way as far as optically anyway, because myopia essentially infers that the optics of the eye are better suited for near vision than they are distance vision. So the normal representation of myopia in graphic form would be that when parallel rays of light come and be, are refracted by the eye, the refraction comes short of the retina and this is essentially what creates blurry vision. And as we know uh, from our studies that you know you throw a minus lens in front of that and it will correct the vision. For most students, this is where their functional understanding of myopia ends. And there's nothing horrible with that. I mean, they're not incorrect. However, as we're going to see in future slides, we need to know a little bit more if we want to be really effective in our troubleshooting and, and, and our recommendations, because there's a little bit more going on here with myopia, and it actually, you know, understanding those intimate details are going to make us better opticians. So why don't we jump in a little further and see what it's all about. Okay, now it's time to look at the mechanism of myopia and see exactly where this phenomenon is coming from. So to start, let's pull up an image of a normal eye and that normal circumstance where parallel rays of light get converged by the optics of the eye and fall directly on the retina. Now this is where you would have the emetropic normal eye. However, we know that in myopia, this isn't the case. We know that the rays of light actually converge in front of the retina. So why is that? Well, in a lot of cases, if not most, Myopia is actually due to an increased axial length of the eye. This isn't the only reason, how, and which I'll touch on a couple of the other reasons. However, this is the most common. So even if the refractive components of the eye are kind of in line with normal vision, we have about 42 diopters of power from the cornea and about 20 diopters from the crystalline lens converging these rays of light to about 23 and a half millimeters, we see that the 
the converged light does not land on the retina because it's too long. Now, before we get into a little bit more about this, it is important to realize that this isn't the only reason why a person can be myopic. We can be getting too many, too much. The other reason is refractive myopia, where we're getting too much power from one of the two uh, components of this visual system, either a steeper cornea, which is contributing more power, or which is becoming more common and something that research is really you know, leaning towards, is sometimes a spasmic crystalline lens can add more refractive power and never fully relaxes to its 20 diopters and contributes more dioptric power, at which actually converges this light a lot faster. However, we don't really care the main reason. We just care that the basic premise is that the optics of the eye are too strong for the focal length. And uh, another thing to remember is that too much plus will automatically equal more convergence than necessary. You'll notice here that this axial length is greater than 23 and a half millimeters. Therefore, this normal refractive power is, is too strong to actually allow the image to be formed on the retina. And of course, as we'll allude to in other slides, the main way to correct this is to subtract from that converging power by adding a minus lens. Okay, this seems like a good enough time to go over kind of the near vision optics of myopia. We've already talked about how the eye is not well adjusted to distance vision, but it happens to be pretty well adjusted to near vision as we discussed in previous slides. So let's take a look at kind of the mechanism behind this and exactly why that is. And we'll talk a little bit about the optics as well of uh, how some of these things kind of manifest. So if we take a look here at the normal kind of distance vision schematic of myopia. We notice here that, like we said, the rays of light converge before the retina, and that's ultimately bad for vision, right? And this is because the optics are too strong. So I don't necessarily have the values here, but at this point, you know, between this lecture and the previous lecture on normal vision, we start we should start to get a bit of a feel for what is considered normal, where the cornea here is considered to have about, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 diopters of power and the crystalline lens is expected to have somewhere around 20. So basically what we're insinuating here is that that 60 diopters of power is too much, too much converging power for the axial length of the myopic eye. Remember that the more plus power, so of course it's this plus 60 that the normal eye is creating, the normal refractive eye, that plus 60 is too strong. It converges things faster than what it needs to be. So essentially, like we're going to see in the correction, you're going to have to reduce the overall converging power. However, on the other side of the equation, when we look at a near object, that little, this little dot here being the near object, the rays of light diverge, the reflected rays of light diverge off of that object. And that pattern, that divergent pattern, actually requires a much shorter focal length of the eye. Well, it just so happens that the myopic eye will have a shorter focal length. So this is, you know, normally what would happen here is that in order to be able to converge these divergent rays, we would have to, you know, invoke the action of the crystalline lens and accommodation. But in the myopic eye, you'll notice here that the crystalline lens hasn't changed. We're able to actually converge those rays of light directly on the retina without any convergence. The eye is actually naturally adjusted to this focal length. Now, one thing that's important to realize here is that not all myopia is created equal. In this particular scenario here, we can kind of assume that this is, let's say, about, you know, 40, 40 centimeters. Uh, in this particular scenario here, this would be pretty appropriate for like, let's say a minus two to a minus three myope where these things were to work out. If the myopia is lower, of course, this object will be clear further back as it, you know, the lower the myopia, it, it approaches more and more normal vision uh, or emetropia. Therefore, that reduced focal length would get moved further back and then eventually to infinity as it approaches zero. And it's important to remember that the dioptric demand will dictate the focal length of the myopic eye, which is basically what I just described. So this is just basically the small little mechanism here behind why it works, for, why myopia works for near vision. Next, we're going to take a look at how it's corrected, and this, we're going to dig a little bit deeper as far as the optics and exactly how the dioptric demand of the eye dictates uh, what would be clear and what wouldn't be. Okay, so in this slide, we're going to take a look again, kind of at the same scenario here, but instead of looking at 
all the bad things that happen. We're going to take a look at exactly how myopia is corrected and the mechanism behind that. And you're going to notice that we're kind of repeating the same principle over and over again. However, I think in this scenario, we're going to be able to kind of see it in action a little bit better. So we'll start off with an example of, let's say, a minus three diopter myope. So you'll notice here the same schematic that we've used in the previous slides, the optic of the, of the eye uh, is about 60 diopters, or at least that's assumed. And again, that's stemming from the cornea and the crystalline lens, you know, the 40-ish the and the 20-ish from those two structures. And we know that based on this schematic that that's too much converging power. So that's 60 diopters is too much to converge those rays of light at the appropriate place, which happens to be the retina. What we actually need in a minus three myope is about 57 diopters. So I hope that this is kind of helpful to kind of see exactly where the optics of myopia kind of come into play. Because a lot of times there's a lot of mystery for a lot of students where they say, well, where did that number come from? Or, or what does that number mean? The number came from the refraction uh, during the eye exam. However, what does it necessarily mean that we need this minus three diopter lens? And now we can kind of see it in action where we, you know, when we use the schematic eye, as well as some of the, you know, the principles of optics that we know, we can kind of tie everything together and it starts to make sense. So, you know, I'll ask you this question before I pull up the, the answer. If we, you know, if we see that we have, we need 60 diopters and we figure that, you know, in reality, the, the eye only needs about 57 diopters of power to achieve this based on its axial length. Now remember, you know, a little side note, the reason this is happening is because of that increased axial length of the eye does not require as much converging power. So, you know, the answer, as I'm sure you kind of guessed, is that if we add a minus three lens, now all of a sudden we've reduced the overall converging power from 60 to 57 by introducing another lens. Now remember that if we look at the eye like a series of lenses, like the cornea being the first, the crystalline lens being the second, all we've done here is we've added a third lens to the overall schematic or the overall equation here. So we've got a, if we were to do this, you know, in, you know, a, with arithmetic, I'm not going to do it right on the slide. However, it's pretty intuitive and it's pretty easy to figure out. You've got, you've got 40 here, 40 at the cornea, 20 at the crystalline lens, making a total of 60. Then you subtract minus three from the overall thing. That's how we end up at 57 diopters. So this is basically the exact principle that it's used to correct all myopia from low myopia to high myopia, we are basically introducing a third lens to this overall lens system, which then adjusts the overall refractive power of the eye to match the axial length. That's a very important concept to understand. We are using lenses to adjust the power of the eye based on its overall length. And this can go in both directions, whether it's myopia or hyperopia, like we'll discuss in next week's lecture. However, this is the concept, if, if anything from this lecture, this is the concept that I want you to really take home. Okay, so, so far we've looked at a few things. We've looked at how the eye, how the, how the myopic eye handles distance vision. We've looked at how the myopic eye thrives with near vision. And we've also looked at how the myopic eye can be corrected for distance vision in, by introducing a minus lens into that overall system and reducing the overall converging power of the system. Now we should look at what happens once the eye is corrected and how it impacts near vision. Because the eye was already well adjusted for near vision based on its focal power. Now if we introduce that lens, in the scenario we use that minus three lens, now the eye is no longer adjusted to near vision, so it's adjusted to distance vision. So how do we see up close? Well, let's take a look here again, a little bit of a recap. The myopic eye is its natural focal point uh, is naturally adjusted to the focal distance of near objects. If we introduce a lens now, all of a sudden, those that focal point is now changed and near objects now actually end up having not enough converging power uh, naturally through the optics of the eye in order to bring that near object into focus. You'll notice here that once again, just like in the case of the normal eye, that once we look at a near object, these optics actually end up behind the retina because there's not enough converging power to make them clear. So as you probably know, or as you've probably kind of suspected, 
What ends up happening is now lens accommodation can add the required focal power to bring the objects into focus. So basically what's happening here is that it's exactly the same as in normal vision as we discussed. That once the focal point of the eye needs to change, we can now invoke the action of accommodation. So again, this is something to take home here is that the myopic eye, though it's well adjusted to near vision, if you're being corrected or if the patient's being corrected, it's necessary that accommodation now takes over because we've now reduced that natural focal point of the eye. So the, the big thing I want you to take home from this, mess, from this uh, slide is the fact that yes, myopia is well suited towards near vision. However, it's a catch-22 because you, you know, the natural focal point of the eye uncorrected may be good, but once it's corrected, things now change and you could basically treat it like normal vision at this point. And just like in normal vision, we require accommodation in order to be able to see up close. Now, we're going to go a little bit deeper into this in a future lecture uh, about presbyopia, but this is where things kind of get a little bit dicey for people over 40 and beyond, because as the, natural, as the eye's natural accommodative ability declines, we're no longer able to add this converging power through the crystalline lens and therefore that's where you see a lot of myopes who see great when they take their glasses off up close however when they're corrected with let's say in that scenario that minus three lens though the distance vision is clear everything up close is blurry because it's no longer the eye is no longer able to take advantage of that accommodative ability again we're going to go through this in, in greater detail but this is a good time to start thinking about this because it starts to make a lot of sense when you look at it how the focal point of the eye gets changed with correction and how it requires accommodation to be able to regain that near vision all right, we've covered quite a bit in this lecture about the, the mechanisms behind myopia and exactly what it means to correct it. Let's go through a little bit of a summary of what we talked about today and kind of you know go over the points that I hope you really got and things to try to always remember whenever we're talking myopia. So the first and most obvious is the fact that myopia does result in blurred distance vision. I know you already knew that. However, worth mentioning, uh, near vision is often adequate and that's due to the reduced focal length of the eye like we showed in the diagrams. Uh, most myopia is due to a longer axial length. We call it axial myopia. There's also refractive myopia and different types of myopia. We didn't go into great detail about it, but at the end of the day, we don't even really care where the myopia is coming from. We care more about the impact on vision and exactly how it's corrected. And of course, like we discussed, the result is an eye that is optically too strong for the sum of its parts. Uh, and of course, in the case of axial myopia, it is too strong for the length of the eye, but at the end of the day, too much converging power is present and it needs to be corrected with a minus power lens, which reduces the overall converging power of the eye, thus focusing the image on the retina. Again, something you'd likely already knew. However, we were able to uh, examine the exact mechanism and kind of look at the math behind the very simple math of how the optics of the eye is changing when corrected with a minus lens. And of course, once corrected, myops can now see close objects through normal accommodation as opposed to the reduced focal length of their eye. And we did also discuss how this now resembles normal vision with the exception of presbyopes who will no longer be able to accommodate and see up close, a concept we will discuss in future lectures. And last but not least, all these concepts become more pronounced as myopia increases, meaning a high myope will have much more of an impact uh, based on these concepts as a lower myope would. All right, well, that does it for this lecture on myopia. I hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to stay tuned next week when we cover hyperopia and we get to compare exactly how these two refractive errors stack up against each other. And don't forget, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. I will make sure to read them all and answer. So you have a great one. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lecture on myopia and what it should mean to you as an optician. Make sure to tune in next week when we cover hyperopia. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly content as it drops. I can't wait to see you in the next one. See you later.